Hey everybody, Ben Drakes here, and yes, I did a post yesterday just about my reaction to the DeepSeek R1 uh, release and what that's done to the um, the industry. Uh, uh, I quoted Alexander Wang, who is CEO of Scale AI, and because I quoted him, it's kind of playing on my mind. I thought actually. I should just play the video. Um, who cares what I've got to say? But let me play the video just in case you haven't seen, just in case you haven't seen this. Um, and real short one this today. And take a listen. It's really, really interesting. First time on the show, Scale AI founder and CEO Alexander Wang. His company provides uh, accurately labeled data to help companies train their AI tools. And uh, back in 2022, he became the youngest self-made billionaire in the world. Pretty amazing. Thanks for having me on. Um, I, I want to go straight to what we were just talking about off camera, which is the idea of where the U.S. is on AI versus China, because you have some very surprising statistics that I think will probably, frankly, freak out some of the viewers. So, yeah, first of all, the, the AI race and the AI war between U.S. and China, I think, is one of the most important issues of today. We took out a full page ad on The Washington Post on on Tuesday uh, saying that, you know, America must win the AI war. And so this sort of relative race in AI between the US and China is critical. Uh, today, we released uh, Humanity's Last Exam, which is a new evaluation or benchmark of AI models that we produced by getting, you know, math, physics, biology, chemistry professors to uh, provide the hardest questions they could possibly imagine that are relevant to their recent research to really put the test to the models. To give you a sense, no model is getting above 10% on this test. Um, that being said, you know, what we found is that DeepSeek, which is the leading Chinese AI lab, their model uh, is actually the top performing or roughly on par with the best American models, which are 01 from. OK, so OPI. I think we have been all under the impression that the U.S. was way ahead of China as it relates to AI, in large part because we have access to, you know, NVIDIA GPUs and chips and other things that that supposedly the Chinese do not have. I keep hearing from people all week, from ch people, uh, Chinese, Chinese AI executives, that they say, well, we're so close. And by the way, we're doing it with one hand tied behind our back. Our algos are better. We're actually going to figure out how to do this, do it better than the U.S. and in even a more energy efficient way because we don't need these super powerful chips. Are they happy to be right? There, there's two things happening. First, it is true. It has been true for a long time that the United States has been ahead. And that's been true for, for you know, maybe the past decade. Okay. That being said, you know, the, the very recent event on Christmas Day, uh, you know, about a month ago, uh, DeepSeek released a model, uh, which, by the way, I think is symbolic that uh, the Chinese lab releases, you know, an earth shattering model on Christmas Day when, you know, the rest of us are sort of celebrating the holiday. And, um, and they released it to, to much fanfare. And then they followed up with their reasoning model, uh, DeepSeek R1, which is the one that we evaluated as top of the leaderboard. Um, you know, the, the, there's, the reality is uh, yes and no. So, uh, you know, the Chinese labs, uh, they have more H100s than than uh, people think, you know, the and these my, are the highest powered NVIDIA chips that they were not supposed to have. Yes. The, my understanding is that is that DeepSeek has about 50,000 H100s, um, which they can't talk about, obviously, because it is against the export controls that the United States has put in place. And I think it is true that, you know, I think they have more chips than other people expect, but also on a go forward basis, they are going to be limited by the chip controls and the export controls that we have in place. How do you I mean, you work with all you work with everybody. So I don't know if it's fair or unfair, but how do you stack rank these large language models and who ultimately is going to be a winner? Or are they all so close and it gets commoditized? The interesting thing that we see right now, so we actually specialize in this. We've produced uh, our SEAL evaluations, our safety uh, evaluations and alignment labs, uh, evaluations which, which measure across many different dimensions. You know, we measure across math capabilities, coding capabilities, multilingual capabilities, uh, and reasoning capabilities, and, and many different dimensions, including tool use and agent capabilities. And what we see is different models are better at different things. So it's hard to put a clear stack ranking among all the models. You know, uh, for example, the OpenAI models are extremely good at reasoning, uh, but the anthropic models might be really good at code. And sort of there's a, there's a diversity of, right. uh, of capabilities of the models. That being said, I think what we're seeing in general is the, the space is becoming more competitive, not less competitive. I 
okay, let's um, let's let's pause that there. Uh, yeah, a very interesting guy, isn't he? So young, <laughs> self-made, youngest self-made billionaire uh, 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 of all time. Uh, congrats to him. Uh, yes, uh, he's saying fifty thousand H one hundreds are over there in China. I don't know where's he getting it. It's all allegedly, isn't it? Um, but also, I did see Deep Seek did actually come from a Chinese hedge fund. And so if I was a hedge fund, I would have taken out a rather large short position on NVIDIA before releasing that news. So uh, very, very interesting. Okay, that's it from this this uh, this mini episode. I just wanted to bring that to you and get, kind of give you the full quote as well. Okay, stay safe. <laughs>